Everybody one for the intelligent as fellas get Listen, let's settle this, be clear I could fall back seven years Still it ain't no one ahead of me Consider it a blessing if you get to stand next to me Five star general, OG veteran What's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. I got this email from Josh. He says, can I do a video or just talk straight about keto versus carb cycling? Also, does eating a maintenance with keto style still reset leptin? Okay, Josh, first thing, fuck leptin. Why do you fucking care what your leptin levels are? Do you measure your leptin levels? Do you know where they are? Or do you go by what you're reading somewhere else, someone else said, oh, your leptin levels this? You don't even know what the fuck your body's doing. Your leptin levels could be fine. And you're going, wow, I feel tired. Yeah, because you're fucking depleted. I mean, depleted not meaning leptin. Depleted mean you're fucking burning fat. You're trying to get lean. Keto versus carb cycling. You know, people over, they over fucking analyze everything. My cortisol levels. When's the last time you had a fucking test to know where your cortisol levels were? You haven't. So shut the fuck. I hate people like that. Like, Jerry, I need to have the fucking pepperoni pizza to offset the cortisol. Dude, shut the fuck up. You don't need the pepperoni pizza because you want the pepperoni pizza. Like, you don't even understand, like... These forums and shit that people are in have given people more fucking material to work with and screw themselves up with than anything else in the fucking world. I mean, they help, but it's stuff like lepitin levels and fucking, I, you know, GH levels in the morning. And if you take this after you work on your insulin levels, and, blah, blah, and I'm like, holy fuck, you know, most of the healthy people, the healthiest people and the best bodybuilders, et cetera, they don't even fucking worry about any of that shit. You ask them what that lepitin is, they don't even fucking know. You know, you ask them about controlling insulin, they're like, what do you mean, like diabetics? They don't even fucking know. So it's like you going through all this shit, trying to learn all this knowledge. Really, if you just fucking stuck to consistency in your diet, eating, and training, you'd fucking be fine. You'd be healthy and you'd see results. But that's neither here nor there. It's kind of ranting. Let's get back. Keto versus carb cycling. Some people will do very well with carb cycling. Some people will need to go with keto. Now, in keto, you don't necessarily have to eat a lot of fat. I've explained this before. The more fat you eat, the less fat your body's going to use. The carb cycling, for some people, it... It'll fill them back out, then they'll deplete, it'll fill them back out. My personal opinion is carb cycling takes longer to get in shape than keto. Um, I think there's somebody, I forget who it was, but they basically, I just watched their thing on Instagram, they said they did a six-month diet. Six months. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, who wants to diet for six months? Yeah, they were in good shape, but they got beat. So there was someone else in better shape now. Did they diet 10 months? You know, I mean, and I ask people when I do the NPC interviews, how long have you dieted? And these are the overall champions of the classes. And these, are, these guys, these people are like 12 to 16 weeks is pretty much average. You know, you get those genetic freaks that are like eight weeks and they diet. And then you hear somebody go, I was in keto. I only did fucking a six-week prep. And they won the overall. They beat everyone else. So keto versus carb cycling, they're, you know, one works faster than the other. I do believe keto works faster. It fucking hurts more. Don't get me wrong. It, it, you feel like shit on keto. I don't know anybody out there who's like, yeah, keto, I feel fucking great. No, I don't, I don't ever hear that. But I also think that you should use everything, carb cycling, high carbs, low carbs, no carbs, keto, sugar, no sugar, everything that's available to you for your disposal. So if you're eating, you know, in a, a carb cycling type deal, you can carb cycle till you get to a certain point, you notice things start to slow down and you're having to reduce your calories too much. And you're like, I'm not really sure where to go. That's when it's time to switch over to keto. So you use, you know, my take always always with myself or any kind of clients if you watched um the vlogs goes my carb intake which i probably if i had to estimate which i don't count my carbs and shit if i had to estimate i'm probably eating around three to four hundred grams of carbs to maintain the 200 pounds that i'm out right now now you don't go from 400 carbs to zero carbs for keto i go from 400 carbs to maybe like 300 carbs down to like 250 grams of carbs for a week and then i start carb cycling and I start pulling the carbs and carb cycling, carb cycling, carb cycling, increasing my cardio, carb cycling. And all of a sudden you get to a point where things start to slow down a little bit. Then I drop into keto about four weeks. This year was four weeks before the show. And that's when the dramatic transformation took place. That's when it really came down. I get down to 181 pounds. And I got very, very lean. Now, I was also trying to get my weight down because I was advised to get my weight down because physique was changing. So had I not had to bend um, you know, the weight I was at, which is like 181, if I was able to walk on stage at 190, I wouldn't have had to do the keto. I would have stayed pretty much where I was and not, you know, sucked down that far. So keto is a tool. I feel like it's the, the I don't feel like it's the be all end all, but I feel like it's the last step for people that have a hard time getting lean that really will get you lean. Other people will be able to eat 500 grams of carbs right up to the fucking show. 
and they fucking get lean. Well, great, that's not me and that's not most people. And I'm learning more and more from the emails that I'm getting that people are not able to eat a lot of carbs. Not a lot of people are able to eat a lot of carbs and get in shape. A lot of people go to their, you know, um, their dietitian, their guru, their fucking whatever, their trainer, and they say, I want to try keto. And the trainer goes, oh, keto, you don't need keto. Keto is not good for you, blah, 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 blah. But then the person never gets in shape. They follow their advice. They never get in shape. They come to me and they go, what do you think about keto? I'm like, well, I got tons of videos about it. I fucking, I think it's a tool like anything else, but I think it's good for some people. It just depends on the person. I don't like the way I feel, but the results come very quickly. So what I, what I can do in four weeks takes everybody else 12 weeks. What I can do in 12 weeks takes everybody else 24 weeks due to the carb cycling and the way that I drop the carbs, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, to me, I think that it depends on the individual as to whether you're going to use a carb cycling all the way up to a show or you're going to do carb cycling, drop into keto, or if you're going to keep the high carbs or whatever. But there really is no one great way. And as far as worrying about like leptin levels, listen, eat your fucking food, do your cardio and fucking train. Stop worrying about, you know, like leptin. You start making shit up in your head and fucking fantasizing about leptin. And you, you think it's dry. It could be completely fine. You're like, oh, I feel extra tired today and I'm hungry. You're hungry because your brain is getting a signal telling you it doesn't want to use the body fat stores. It's not because leptin levels are fucking dropping. Your leptin levels could be fine, but your body's trying to burn fat. It doesn't want to do that. So be aware. There's a lot of shit going on survival-wise that doesn't have anything to do with fucking leptin or cortisol or any other bullshit. But, you know, stop fucking analyzing shit to the point where it fucking drives you nuts and you start overthinking things. You know, you're never going to progress like that. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I see people time and time and time again who don't progress for shit because they're overthinking things. And I was one of those people. I was one of those people that fucking, I'm the guy that like you look at the watch, you're like, oh, the watch, how does it work? I fucking open the watch up and fucking take it apart to see how it works. I always want to know why. And I would always question why, why, why does this work like this? Why does keto work like that? Why does this work like this? And for the longest time, I was stagnant. I was completely stagnant. I said, you know what? Enough of this bullshit. I'm going back to what fucking I used to do. I'm going back to what Al used to tell me, what Jim Fijo used to tell me. You know, and then later on, Kevin Lebroni would tell me. It was, you know, Phil Hernan. Like, it was completely different when you stop overthinking things. So, I hope this helps, um, Josh. Biopsytraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biopsytraining.com is a blog. It's the no longer on keto bicep. That's why it's so much fuller. And we're out.